Oh, the thing that attracted me to uh, the role was pretty simple really. You know, um, Victorian cricket has a rich history um, in Australian cricket uh, and the talent. Um, you know, on both male and female side of things, the, the list is, well the lists are strong um, and I can see over the next four to five years um, having some real impact on not only the domestic competitions but uh, hopefully some Australian representation as well. Yeah, look, since, uh, since my playing time, um, you know, I've, I've had an opportunity to, I guess, um, work in a couple of different industries. Uh, I spent a little bit of time in the building industry um, uh, following my exit from the game and then um, uh, an opportunity came up at the uh, Australian Cricketers Association, so I, um, I led the, the cricket operations there and um, you learn a lot of uh, lessons actually um, in that time about the administration side of the game, which was always a pull. Um, and then the last sort of six years I've, uh, I've spent running or overseeing, I should say, the, uh, the national development programs. Um, so having the opportunity to work with the best 17 to 19 year olds has been um, yeah, a lot of fun. The last couple of years, obviously, um, that role's extended a little bit across Australia A programs as well. But um, yeah, that, that's my uh, my time out of the game in a nutshell, if you like. Yeah, I think um, you know, spending time in the the pathway system. Yeah, you know, I think having that grounding and understanding of the next talent coming through, um, their needs and requirements um, are certainly going to help me in this role. Um, I think. It is certainly a very different generation now to when you know, myself played and, and perhaps even some of the senior guys in the list and, and, and some of the, the senior females in the list, you know, it's, it's different. Um, so having that understanding of their needs is certainly going to prepare me well um, in this role. Yeah, look, having a, um, a, a solid pathway system is, is vitally important. Um, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, having something that both uh, young boys and girls can see um, you know, it gives them a sense of what that, that's what I'd like to be um, and having some clarity as to how I get there, hopefully being the Australian teams, um, it, it is critical. I think um, the, the beauty of our system and, and the strong systems that we've got here in Victoria is that there are multiple uh, entry and exit points. Uh, I think that's that's one of the benefits of, of cricket in general, but um, the strength of our pathway system and, and Premier Cricket, I think, is going to continue to hold Victorian cricket in very good stead. Yeah, look, the, the men's squad is somewhat diverse. Um, a lot of uh, young, talented cricketers have come in. Um, you know, as, as you've said, you know, the history of the last 10 years has been quite successful in terms of domestic competitions. Um, looking at the squad, I think there's a genuine opportunity for um, some of the, the, the skill sets to really make a mark in the next couple of years. If you, if you do look at the Australian team, um, you know, that whilst that, that fast bowling unit in particular is a, a strong one, um, they're, they're starting to age, um, so there's, there's certainly going to be some opportunity there. Yeah, and obviously Nathan Lyon in the, the longer format um, side of things. I'm, I'm sure he would like to go to his 50 but uh, I see a, a real opportunity there for some of our young spinners and um, you know, obviously even with a, a couple of the older guys from a batting perspective there's a lot of subcontinent um, uh, cricket happening particularly in the red ball side of things so um, a lot of opportunity particularly up the order for um, our guys and we've got depth there which is um, you know, something that really excites me and I think um, you know, whilst there's been a lot of success, um, we all want more representation and I think um, if we can provide those environments to allow players to flourish then that will happen organically. Yeah, having the Australia A program uh, up and running is um, fantastic for Australian cricket, but particularly um, you know, Victorian cricket with, with young Todd Murphy um, getting an opportunity. Yeah, those opportunities to go into a, a foreign environment, particularly like Sri Lanka, and, and learn a different art. Um, you know, those, those wickets over there certainly require a different style of bowling to what we're used to back home. So um, getting that knowledge to then bring back and continue to work on that as an aspiration um, is fantastic. Um, 
what he's also got to be mindful of is that we still need to be successful in our home conditions. So having that balance is, is going to be really a, a key learning for him um, over this next few months. But um, you know, from a character perspective, you know, he's someone that can certainly handle and manage that moving forward and it's exciting. I think the second level competition is um, a critical stepping stone in um, the, the overall pathway, if you like. It, it provides opportunities for some of the younger guys in the, the contracted squad to to get that four day match exposure. Um, obviously it, it provides opportunities for those that sit outside of the contract squad in Premier Cricket who are performing to, to again um, test themselves against uh, a level just above Premier Cricket. So for me it's, it's, it's critical. Obviously with the last couple of years here in Victoria where it's been a real challenge to have any red ball cricket um, if, yeah, I think it, it's it's vital. Um, you know, we need we need players playing as much red ball cricket while Test cricket is still strong. Um, and certainly can't see Test cricket going away anyway anywhere soon. And um, you know, uh, the, I guess the relationship between England and India is only getting stronger. So um, you know, from a pathway point of view, we, we do need it. Yeah, with the with the female group, uh, yeah, as you said, there's a lot of lot of talent, um, and I guess it's probably at either ends of the spectrum, right? We've got some a lot of Australian representation, but um, a lot of youth there. So um, a lot of learning the last couple of years in a in a COVID environment. Um, yeah, we're always looking for players uh, to become more resilient. I think um, the lessons that that young group learnt last year will hold them in really good stead for the next three to four years. And I think there's a really strong nucleus of, uh, of a, a squad there that I think will um, very quickly um, put Victoria back into where uh, it's traditionally used to being um, domestically, which is at the top competing for trophies. Yeah, look, having uh, obviously the Australian captain in Meg Lanning and Elise Perry uh, around some of our young cricketers, you can't put a price on those things. Um, their willingness to always be a part of the group and um, and I guess allow and give themselves to the, the players is invaluable. So um, any opportunity that we can get to have them in and around the group is uh, uh, yeah, it's like gold and um, from what I understand you know the young players love it and um, yeah they're, they're eking as much out of them while they can. Yeah the expansion of WNCL is fantastic. Um, yeah, playing games it's hard to replace that and, and the opportunity to play against the best more often um, is going to be fantastic not only for um, you know the, the Victorian squad members but Australian cricket as a whole and I think the other thing that it will do is um, really force us to ensure that Premier Cricket beneath is, is thriving and strong.